Hello. Welcome to our, every year we actually do this. We have a presentation for new cool music company, tech companies and other companies. Uh, and it has been uh, really interesting to see some, some of these companies has been on us and then five years later have been multinational, really, really big corporations. So uh, I'm always excited about this part of the conference. And um, this year we have four cool new things that's going on. And also for the first time this year we actually have a local, which I really like. We had never had that before, uh, a company from Urbro. But first, we will t get out with Tract and Grant here. So I will take over to Grant. Give him an applaud. Thank you very much, Peter. How's everybody doing? All good? Of course, my first time in Red Row today, and I'm very, 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 very pleased I came. It was a beautiful place it is. Um, so yes, uh, I'm Grant Tilbury. I am from a company called Tract. We are based between London and uh, my native Wales, South Wales. Give you a bit of background. Um, I sort of found, um, I came across Live at Heart through, through Peter and through Andy Jones, who runs Focus Wales, which is a festival. I believe he's talking a little bit later on, on the the festivals panel that's going on. But I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about tracks and what we do. So we're an eight-track recording, uh, eight-track recording studio for uh, in your, on your phone. It's on, currently on iOS. Uh, we're a live recording app. I've got a short video that will give you a bit of a background into how it looks and what it does. Um, and then I'll show you how it works on, on the phone. So, two seconds, I'll play the video. Okay, when you're ready. Whatever musicians play, they should be able to cooperate. That's a bit about what we do. So we are a uh, recording app, a social collaborative recording app. Um, we set about in 2016 where we launched. Um, it's a free app for uh, musicians and songwriters to download. Uh, there's, we've done about 250,000 downloads so far, so we're kind of well on our way. Um, we've got artists from all around the world uh, that are on there and collaborating. Um, essentially, the idea came about from talking to lots of songwriters and how they had these moments of inspiration where they get a moment of inspiration and they would record the nucleus of that song idea on, a, on their phone app, on the, on the voice memos. Um, so we're like, well, how can we, how can we make that a bit more of a, a, more of a useful tool for, for songwriters and musicians? So we had the idea of multi-tracking uh, those, those tracks um, very much in the same way as like a, the old Tascam 8 tracks from, from yesteryear. Um, and then to be able to uh, send them to your friends and peers and to find new artists and musicians to actually work and collaborate with. Um, and, so, and so we set about uh, building tracks. Um, and so far, we've... Uh, <coughs> so, yeah, so far we've had quite... We're, we're doing eight, eight minutes of music per day. Um, which is fantastic, and I said we're open to all uh, all countries that have access to the App Store. We're currently only iOS based, but we're working on a uh, an Android version for other songwriters, singer songwriters around the world to use. Um, and I'd like to show you how it works, if that's all right with you. 
So two seconds, we'll do a little bit of uh, technical jiggery pokery and uh, I'll set that up. Does that change the cross, Simon? Yeah. Cool. Right, we haven't got any audio for this, unfortunately, so um, you have to imagine these amazing songs, but I'll show you how the mechanics of it work and how it works. So essentially, it's a, um, it's a place, as I said, it's, a so it, it, it's social, so you can follow people, people can follow you, you can favorite songs, um, you have a feed with, with people that you follow and you can listen to their demos. You can like them if you wish by hitting this little heart button here. And also we have sort of a curated feed across the top of stuff that we've discovered and liked and would like the whole of the community to listen to. So essentially what you do is you scroll through, you listen to a track. If you like it, as you said, you can, you can like it or you can, you can download it into your project space. And then from here you can Add to the um, add to the track what you like, and then you can send it back to that person um, once you've finished your recording, um, just to get their feedback on it and see if they like it and if they want to collaborate further on that particular idea. Or if you've got a new song, a new idea, you can hit a new song. I'm going to call it the Live at Heart song because we're in uh, in Red Row. And in here, you can record your song idea. So it uses the microphone that's on the, uh, on the iPhone itself. And in these squares, these big red squares, you can just hit tap record, tap your song idea. I would, I mean, I'm a guitarist and I haven't got a guitar with me and I can't sing, so I'm not going to uh, subject you to that. Um, and you can multi-track. So each square is essentially a track. And as you build up your song, um, you multi-track your song, and then within the square you have lots of uh, different options. So you can swipe right or left, and you can bring people in. So I could swipe, swipe left, and uh, it pulls up everybody that you follow, or you can search for people. And when you search for people, you can search for other vocalists, drummers, keyboard players, bass players, producers, and guitarists for, you know, uh, who are on, on the app as well. I'm just going to search for... Actually, I'm just going to search for a gentleman who's at the back of this room. He's called Luri. He's an artist from India, um, one of our Indian artists. And he's here uh, performing later on, actually, as well. So I'm just going to search for Luri. And here, there he is. Um, and I'm going to invite him to collaborate with me. Ooh. Like, hey, lay down some drums. Oh, sorry, there we go. Lay down some guitar. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, and you can collaborate with more people. So you can hit search and you can bring in other people into the mix. So I'm going to bring in, this, uh, bring, in uh, bring Aubrey here. And maybe she plays some drums. So hey, <laughs> lay down some drums. Um, and so and so forth. And then from here, you can... Uh, you can post it to the feed for other people in the community to, to uh, lay down their music and, their, and, and build a song with them. Or you can export it to social, so Twitter, Facebook, or you can post it to the feed. And when you post it to the feed, it winds up uh, here, where you can ultimately you know, um, invite people to come in and, uh, you know, and, and collaborate with you. Um, if you're more of a sort of studio-based DAW um, using artist and you want to find top liners, so you might, wanna, you might be proficient in Pro Tools, Logic, Reason, uh, those, kind of, those kind of amazing systems, you can, uh, in, you can import audio um, via uh, the, the Files app on your iPhone or you can import audio through the track, through Dropbox, and then you can maybe invite some people to come in and top line on your work and that sort of stuff. It's got simple features like uh, a simple mixer. Left, you know, it's got left and right stereo mix, um, up to eight tracks uh, to uh, mix uh, within within the app itself. It's got simple recording features such as uh, such as a click, and um, you can also plug in a line input. 
And you can also, it's also tap tempo here as well if you want to lay down your ideas. And there's also a lyrics pad as well, so you can write and store your lyrics for each project that you have. Um, yeah, so that's essentially the app at the moment. Uh, we're working on um, a new version at the moment with lots of new features. Um, as I said, it's 250,000, I've lost you there. Um, 250,000 people at the moment working around the world and collaborating with one another. We're an eight-track studio because we weren't trying to be a DAW on your phone. We want to kind of uh, encourage songwriters and musicians to uh, be creative. Um, we're an eight-track studio because, uh, as I said before, it's that kind of uh, laying down ideas, task cam approach. Uh, our CEO's father used to have the, one of the world's first eight-track recording studios in London called Trident Studios, which was a... Um, recording studio where Queen recorded Sheer Heart Attack and David Bowie recorded Space Oddity. Um, so we kind of taken that lineage, lineage forward from being uh, you know, an eight-track an eight recording studio in the traditional sense to a studio on your iPhone moving forward. Um, we've been very lucky to work with lots of amazing musicians and artists from around the world. Um, just recently, uh, Dave Stewart, who's from the Rhythmics, uh, he um, has got involved with the app. He's a shareholder in our company. And he is working with uh, a great singer-songwriter from Denmark called Iris Gold. And they've collaborated on a song which is coming out later this year. And they recently uh, played in London together doing the Eurythmics songbook, which was absolutely fantastic. So we're kind of working with artists uh, on the, you know, out and about places, you know, at, at music festivals. We're doing, um, doing showcase events and sessions. So I'm here really to kind of meet uh, songwriters and musicians and to talk to them, to make connections and to, and to, you know, to, to kind of get people involved and people collaborating and, uh, and that kind of thing. So that's pretty much us in a nutshell. I think I've gone over 10 minutes already. So if anyone's got any questions, I'll be happy to, uh, to answer them. Um, I've got a card. Uh, if you want to download it, I can give you a free... Uh, uh, well, it's a four track, but it's, a, it's an eight track upgrade, but I can unlock the full app for you if you want to try it out and uh, let me know what you think. So yeah, that's all good. Yeah, Hi. Quick question, uh, what capabilities or functionality is there to manage copyright within the app? If someone's come up with a song and a melody, and yeah. looking for collaboration, yes. where does the right, where the lines of rights start and stop? Yeah. Very, very valid question. Uh, the, the, how, our take on it at the moment, we're providing the tools for people to use and create music. I guess at that point, whenever anyone logs anything on the app, there's a digital timestamp for when that was done. So you can kind of trace back ideas to that, you know, ideas and, and copyright to that very moment. Um, everything on the app isn't public unless you want it to be either. So it's, it, it could be a very private experience or it can be a very public experience. You know, you could be like, hey, I've just written this guitar line. Do you want to record, um, you know, do you want to uh, lay down a, a top line or a vocal idea or put some lyrics in? And like, at that moment then, I guess it becomes more public or you want to open it up to the community. So yeah, it, that's kind of how we are. We don't take any rights in anything that's recorded on there at all. You know, all, we, all we are doing is providing the tools for musicians and songwriters to connect and also to, to lay down their ideas. So, yes. Yeah, we can, you've got the ability to DM one another through the, through the app. I'll quickly show you how that, that works. Um, we're trying to, establish, we're trying to uh, build on that in the sense that uh, it, at the moment it's, not, it, it's quite buried how you talk to one another. But basically, if I, um, if I, if I invite somebody in again, um, somebody else actually who's here this weekend, it was a D. So I'll just... Sorry, two seconds. There we are. And then, so you, you can essentially talk to each other by clicking on, you know, clicking on the on the on the on the on the profiles of the people, and you can talk to one another and build and build uh, connections that way. Um, we are we are thinking about you know bringing different uh, kind of songwriting, making it bringing tools in to kind of make that, uh, that discussion 
a little bit more up front and free. Because what we find as well, we've got lots of people, I can imagine lots of people in this room are kind of more pro, mus pro musicians versus hobbyists. So you, as you can imagine on most social platforms, you get people who are just having a knock about, they fancy themselves as a singer or they want to get into music that way. Um, or it just might be something that they do in their spare time and they don't really sort of, they're not really thinking of like maybe the business side of things as much as like pro musicians do. So yeah, it's, we're, we're finding this, there's obviously a lot of pro musicians and there's a lot of hobbyists on it. And there's a lot of musicians who are hobbyists who are actually realizing actually this, there might be something in this, you know, a bit more than, than, than uh, something I do in my spare time. So yeah. So any other questions? Yes. Sorry. Our business model, well, at the moment we've, we, we're, we're looking, we're, we're moving towards a subscriptions-based um, uh, subscriptions based model. At the moment, it's a free app to download. The only, uh, only way we're monetizing the app at this moment in time is through um, in-app upgrades. We purposely didn't go down the advertising route because we just think it's a really bad experience for people being bombarded with ads left, right, and center. So yeah, the next, we're, we're reiterating this particular version now, we'll be moving to a uh, the subscription-based model, and that's how we're gonna sort of move the business forward. Yes, please. Sorry? Uh, at the moment, uh, as I said, it, it's a, um, sorry, I'm just gonna unplug this before my messages come through. Uh, <laughs> We, at the moment, we, um, well, we're going to be hopefully earning money through the for a subscriptions model by providing tools uh, where we can, you know, when people can either use the, keep on using the free version or they're going to have new tools, things like effects, uh, that kind of stuff moving forward. Yeah. So we've, at the moment, we've built this app by taking seed seed funding and yeah, just kind of like building a business model around that. Brilliant. Uh, is there any other questions? Or are we all good? Thank you very much for your time. Appreciate it. Hi, everyone okay? Yeah? yeah. Uh, so we are the local company, Peter was mentioned before, uh, Opus Magnum, or Opus Magnum if you prefer. Um, we are really proud of being here today. Uh, it's very nice. Um, my name is uh, Andreas Wessling. I'm 45 years old. And uh, I live just outside this beautiful little town, so not very far. Um, I'm also one of the founders of Opus Magnum. Uh, my name is Alex. Oh, my name is Alex. I'm, uh, I also live just outside of town here. Uh, and uh, yeah, um, he's going to tell you a little bit more about about us, and then I'll dive into a little bit about the studio. So yeah. Yeah. Um, Alex will let you in uh, on the technology part and uh, more of our visions. Uh, but first, uh, let's, get, let's get deep, deep with me, some uh, poetry. Uh, so when you come to think of it, uh, what, what's music? What's music for real? What's, what's, it, what's it to you? Is it important? Does it have an effect, an impact on your life? Is it really that big? So, and do we need it? Do we need music? I know a lot of people that don't think it's that necessary with music. I'm not one of them. Um, I could say music for me is something that someone else creates, but for you or me to enjoy, that's not bad, I think. It's just amazing. Uh, so anyone here? Want to share what music is to them? Anyone? Don't be afraid. <laughs> okay, Alex, you want to share? I'm, I'm music for me. For me, music is everything. That's that's really all there is to it. Yeah. So okay. 
Here comes the poetry. Um, I believe there is an underestimated power in music. And I'm sure all of you know what I'm talking about. Um, it's like uh, it's like it's hidden to your senses, even though you can hear it. Um, and the effect is huge, tremendous effect. Uh, and now it's kept deep. Uh, you know when you feel down or out of energy, music can lift you up, make you walk another mile. I know you understand. When you feel sad, music can make you smile. When you're angry, music can help ease your mind and help you think clearer. That's not bad things. It's really great, actually. Um, one could say, uh, music, this is my opinion anyway, uh, music is like a drug, a healthy, a healthy one. A drug that I think everyone needs from time to time. Um, and another magical thing about it, about music, is that it's almost always for free. Just, you just have to turn on the radio. So, uh, well, enough of poetry. Uh, and those are just, that's just my thoughts. So, I don't want to force them on anyone. Uh, so, who are Opus Magnum? Uh, well, I started playing drums uh, 1987 at uh, TBV Educational Association. That's a hard word, but I nailed it. Uh, and I've been playing in lots of different local bands for several years. I still play drums, but I'm not in a band at the moment. So, um, mostly hard rock, metal, death metal, thrash metal, that kind of music. Um, but as I grew up, or I grew older, maybe not wiser, but older, uh, I realized I really like all kinds of music. All kinds of music. And um, I have developed a passion for music production. So, music has been a central part of my life for about 30 years, and I really hope it will continue to be, because I, well, I think it's, it's amazing, the effects of music, and, yeah, well, that's about all I can say. Uh, like, I, like I said, my, like I said, my name is Alex. Um, I'm a music producer and mixing engineer. Uh, I have a background as a guitarist uh, and slightly drummer, but not nearly as much as this guy. Um, and uh, my uh, my roots are in uh, the southern parts of America, uh, where I grew up listening to a lot of hip hop, uh, and today it is you know very influenced by the trap scene. Um, so we first met in 2018, and we click quickly realized that we shared a passion for, for music, um, and uh, our visions were very similar. Um, so we uh, uh, started looking at how we can, you know, get this going so that we can reach our goals and help other people reach their goals. Uh, so what we wanted to do was work with music in all shapes and forms. Um, our vision is to help artists reach their full potential, as most studios should be, right? Um, but in our, in our view, we found um, with our experience, you know, with local bands and people that we've met around, around town and, you know, all over the world, is that a lot of times, you know, people run into barriers, artists run into barriers trying to find places to record their music or find help and mixing and all that. Um, and, and a lot of songs just end up in a drawer. And I mean, potential hits hidden away that nobody listens to. And we wanted to cut that out. We wanted to make sure that every, every project, every song has you know, a chance to be heard by someone somewhere. Uh, so that, that was our vision, to, uh, um, to help uh, any artist, you know, be it local or be it from across the world, um, to get their projects out. Um, and the main thing here is that that can be done to a reasonable price. Um, especially here in Sweden, costs can skyrocket very quickly when you start you know, looking at recording time and studio time and mixing work. Um, and we wanted it to kind of flip that on its top, you know, make it a little bit more accessible for any artist of any caliber, whether you be writing your first song in your, in your room or whether it's your second or third album, you know. We wanted to be, be there to help them out. Um, so, we, 
founded in 2018, mid-2018, started recording our first artists in the spring of this year. Uh, and now we're just looking for, you know, expansion, getting our name out there, making sure people know that we, we are here, we are available, and that we can, we can help people out. Um, our, uh, our vision is based around working with kind of in, a, in an intimate setting, you know? Like we want to be very close with the artists working together, uh, not necessarily stepping on their toes, but being there for them. Um, that's, that's our whole goal. I mean, this is, after all, a service industry, and if we're not satisfying the needs of our clients and of, of the musicians, then, you know, what are we really doing here? Um, now, when it comes to uh, the way we work, we can work with anything from singer-songwriters to, you know, full band settings. We have capabilities of recording all, all different types of, of sizes of bands. Uh, maybe not a full-blown orchestra, but, you know, that's not neither here nor there. Um, we understand that in today's music uh, world, um, a lot of projects are, are not just a one-man thing or a one-band thing. They involve several different producers and engineers from you know, all over the country or the world working together. Therefore, we try to adhere to the Recording Academy's guidelines for delivery and sharing projects so that uh, any artist or any part of the production can access all files um, easily and that they can be shared in between every part of the process uh, so that everybody has, has access and ease of use. Um, we provide full in-house production, recordings, mixing work, and management work if need be, although there hasn't been that much of a necessity for that yet. Um, and uh, uh, this year, so far, we've worked with three rappers, um, three local rappers, um, a, a couple metal bands, and a, uh, a singer-songwriter, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, our vision is, is to be able to, you know, provide affordable services to, to everybody. Um, supporting local talent is our, is our passion because we are from Audible and this is, you know, um, this is a music town, in my view at least. Uh, and, uh, but we, we also want to build the global connections. You know, we want to make sure that, that you know, you're not just heard here in Audible. Let's, let's get out there. Let's try and find new avenues for you to, to get your music out. And that's, uh, that's pretty much that about Opus Magnum. I think, I think we made 10 minutes, right? <laughs> Thanks for listening. You guys have any questions? Yeah, go ahead. You don't, you don't get... Yeah, physical recording studio. Oh, 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 I apologize about that. Yeah, yeah, no, we're, we're a physical recording studio uh, here in Odebrew. Yeah. No, I mean, our, our main thing is, is, is working with, with local talent. Uh, I mean, that, that's where we're starting out right now. Um, I, as far as innovation goes, I mean, I, we're, we're not really trying to push the envelope on anything, but we're also not trying to be industry leaders in that either. Uh, we want to be the, the affordable middle step from stepping out of your bedroom or out of your, you know, home setting or whatever it may be before you get into, you know, the production value of a large, you know, well-established studio, there's not really a whole lot of middle ground there. And, uh, and we wanted to, to try and be that middle step to help you get to your next, you know, your next goal. So I, I'm not, we're not standing up here trying to say that we're some big recording studio that can handle, you know, everything and anything, but we can definitely provide a, a high quality level of service to somebody that, that needs to take that next step. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Can you hear this? Uh, can I just ask who's the musician here? Promoter, manager? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Festival organizer? <laughs> <laughs> thanks. 
Yeah, it's just good to know where it's up to, for sure. Oliver? Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Oliver. I'm one of the co-founders and the CPA of Bending, which is a matchmaking application for musicians, bands, acts to make exchange gigs with each other and uh, through that uh, broaden their fan base. He's, he's uh, Renato and um, he's our CEO. I'm a musician myself and I, uh, we have a nice little uh, hometown audience back in Budapest, Hungary. And I started to play international shows like three years ago. Uh, played in uh, South Korea, Liverpool, uh, Switzerland, uh, Switzerland, and uh, I had to face a really big challenge when I went to play a headline show somewhere else, and it looked like this. So this is me, basically, on the left side, playing a hometown gig, and this is us, again, playing somewhere new. Is it any familiar to anybody here? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, so we are trying to solve this problem with bending, and we think that the solution for this problem is uh, digitized exchange gigs. Do you know what an exchange gig is? Okay, basically it means that if I have a gig right uh, like that on the left side, I can invite somebody similar to my band to play the support slot and then he will invite me back to, uh, to their uh, hometown gig and uh, I can play the support slot there. And it means that both of us will grow organically and we will have the chance to convert uh, each other's uh, live audience, hometown, hometown live audience, uh, to our uh, own fan base. So that was the core idea, and we laid down the foundation of, uh, of banding, which should be uh, connecting the unconnected and uh, helping musicians to unlock their, their true power and uh, to help them to fulfill their true potential. And we want bands to treat others uh, that they want to be treated. Yeah, um, just a few words. I started when Oliver found me like a year ago. Actually, we've been working together for some years, but came to the with the idea to make a sort of Tinder for bands that I really like because I've been working with bands for a very long time. Uh, been running a sync agency, East Taste. Uh, we are working with hundreds of bands uh, to place their music in ads and films. And we also started to run a showcase festival called Bush Budapest Showcase Hub uh, for four years now. And we're working with a lot of talents, mainly from Eastern Europe. Um, we also did some fun side projects, New Kids from the Block, it's a music, um, online music magazine. But so we're basically working with a lot of emerging talents and uh, booking a lot of shows. And a lot of them come to us, also bookers and the managers, to help find gigs for them, help uh, bands they could play with and just connect them with all kinds of new territories. So we've been seeing this, this need uh, for connecting with other acts and artists for a long time. So it really resonated well um, with us. So we started to develop the idea a little bit further and first did a survey with about 200 bands from all over Europe to see how actually, how much they want to do this. So whether it's, it's, I mean, we knew it's a proper technique and, and we use this tactic all the, all the time, but how they relate to it. And we found that a lot of bands uh, have been doing this. They really want to do this. They see it as a good way to, to grow, but also there's a lot of uh, problems and challenges along the way, uh, finding similar bands, finding bands who would actually re return the gig and just all kinds of issues. And we saw that's great because then we can find some solutions for for those problems. So we developed the idea a little bit further, uh, applied for some funding, we got some from the uh, EU's Music Moves uh, Europe project, and uh, started to build uh, just a landing page to gather bands and gather all kinds of people who would be interested to start this journey with us, because it's really uh, a big search and an exploration for a, a model that really works, uh, both uh, solution-wise and both uh, business-wise. So. We started to do that and collected a couple of bands, like around 400 who were really interested and we started to make um, matches between them. Yeah, first, we actually got a lot of really cool bands who were big on their own territories. Um, 
they all do like thousand sellout shows in Russia or in Romania, in Hungary, all over uh, Europe also. And um, they really build their career through a lot of collaboration with other bands. So they really got the idea and why they should uh, see it as a good way, you know, just to start the ball rolling. So they, they teamed us up with us and uh, offered support slots for some of their bigger, biggest shows of the year. And um, we started finding matches for them from all the other bands that we collected. Yes, but the question is what consists, uh, what is a good match? Uh, and we believe that a good match starts with balanced offers. Uh, it means that both uh, bands should have similar size of audience uh, or similar uh, music taste uh, in, regarding the audience. And they should have some sort of uh, same attitude towards uh, writing and playing music. Uh, they should offer uh, similar promotional activities and um, yeah, aesthetics and style is also pretty important because you cannot deny that you don't really feel some sort of kinship when you see somebody wearing the same leather jacket that you do. Um, and the motivation part is pretty crucial as well um, because it's, it's a lot of effort to play international uh, gigs. Um, I'm sure that you, you all know this. Um, and the location is also is also something that should be taken into consideration when you, when you pick your match and when you uh, say that you want to uh, play an exchange gig uh, and commit yourself to do something uh, because it's really expensive uh, to travel with music, music instruments. Uh, so you better start something uh, closer to you or some, something that's affordable. And I would like to show you some, uh, some of our first matches. Our first match actually was uh, between the Hatters uh, from Russia and the Hungarian Bohemian Bechars. Um, the Hatters is a, is a really big band playing uh, sellout shows in, uh, in Russia and they offered uh, their biggest show in St. Petersburg uh, this year to Bohemian Bechars. And they like uh, each other so much that they're going to write a song together, record it and even uh, play it on their shows. But you don't have to, uh, don't necessarily have to uh, offer thousand capacity venues and opportunities to bands if you have a small small uh, audience uh, at your hometown that's fair enough uh, just like at the case in the case of half tone half tones and shaken to female led uh, rock band from Serbia and Hungary and uh, you don't even have to uh, play the guitars or be in a rock band or be be a band actually uh, you can be an electronic act just like Bosch or uh, Electro Forest yeah, so right now it's all really tedious because we're doing this manually, but of course um, we are developing uh, an algorithm and the platform for this in the background, uh, which we are going to come out with very soon. We really wanted to take some time and, and learn, uh, working with bands, actually what the most crucial parts of an exchange gig is for them and what sort of tools and features they would really need, you know, not to go ahead and build stuff that they won't actually use. So we now feel we have a really good idea of uh, what sort of uh, steps they should take and how we should help them with that. Um, but we really need to also like gather a lot of data about their socials, uh, their popularities, you know, their music profiles, audience profile, all that stuff. So we crunch a lot of numbers and gather a lot of data about the bands to uh, make a recommendation system that really works. And uh, we're gonna have a first version of that pretty soon, um, which will speed up the the gig process also, we are looking to get to around 50 by the end of 2019, but it's still uh, a very early phase and just uh, we're going to use beta testers basically who we have in our network. Um, yeah, and checklists and review systems and all kinds of tools that help them actually go through the phases that, that needs to uh, be done to confirm a gig. And, and make sure that they will return the gigs. So we will in, uh, include a, a review system also. And um, just to say a few words about the monetization and the business plan, we really don't want to charge musicians to pay like a monthly fee or a, a flat fee um, in a subscription model or something like that. But we want to open up the, the monetization channels between the bands and the fans um, to make a direct line in that. So they could sell their tickets through us, for example, directly to the fans. They could sell merch um, and they can, they can um, 
you know, start all kinds of campaigns like Pledge Music, which just shut down, which is a pretty big vacuum right now, I think. Um, and the crowdfunding aspect is also a very interesting one. This is also going to be a journey for us to experiment with this and the team. Um, so we're really looking forward to that and, and see where it goes. Yeah, uh, that was us. Thank you very much. We're looking forward to meet some of the bands who we reached out to, and we have a couple of really great matches for them. Um, we're going to see them at 3 p.m. in this building somewhere, so we're looking forward to that. But anyone else, if you're interested, guys, just hit us up, come meet us, or write to us, or reach out any way you want, and we'd be happy to talk further. Thank you very much. So there we had him. Unfortunately, we can't do uh, in Deninja today because he's stuck on a train between Stockholm and Arbro. Uh, but you will meet him anyway. Uh, he will be on the future panel. His name is Bill, Bill Wilson. He comes later. But um, if you want to know about in Deninja, you just can talk to me also. In Deninja is a new company that actually uh, sells services, uh, more or less like a fiber campaign that you, uh, you can find people to do different services like send outs and or uh, logo designer or anything like that. But if you want to know more about that, you just contact me and I will hook you up with Bill who's on his way and hopefully he'll be here in the afternoon. Thank you so much for this panel and thank you for being here. <laughs>